When was the last time you took a leap of faith trusting that everything is going to work out? Do you crave growth or are you merely content with the status quo? If you want more out of your life, out of your career, and out of your relationships, you are in the right place. Take the leap and discover how to create a life by design rather than living it by default. Real success starts with you. Now here's your host, Colleen Biggs. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to another episode of Take the Leap. I am your host, Colleen Biggs. And uh, it's, you know, it's it's funny because I was just talking to my guest today and uh, he doesn't know this. I said he because you guys are like, what? You got another guy on the show? You know, it seems like in the last several months, I've interviewed several gentlemen on the show. So that's definitely changing. And I'll tell you why. As I meet these gentlemen over and over and over again, I'm like, they are resonating with me. I love what they're doing. They are super wicked smart in their industry. And I want to bring them on here to share all of that because they have an expertise that I don't have. They have experience that I don't have. And they're different than some of the other women that I've brought on the show. So now you're going to be hearing men and women on the show, uh, which I'm excited about. I, you know, at, at all my conferences, it's always all women. And there's the one man in the room, which is usually my husband in the back of the room, wherever we are. And he's a videographer. So he's a videographer. He's a photographer. I have not found a woman better than him yet to this point. And I say, if anyone knows a videographer, that's a really, really good. I've even had women take photos of my conferences. They just can't compare to the level that he's at. Right. So I always say, you know, he'll be floating around the back, uh, not participating, but um, I, I always want to go with whether it's, it's a person, it's the person that I feel does the best job. And today Ty Richardson's going to be joining us. And we haven't talked about this subject specific. We have talked about growth. We've talked about how to scale your business, but we've not talked about growth, scale and exit. Coming from Silicon Valley, he has a lot of experience being a digital nomad. We're really going to dive into that in just a minute. Super excited to have him here. Uh, but before we get to Ty, I have to thank today's sponsor of today's show, Paige Marlino Real Estate. Choose excellence in real estate with Paige Marlino, a seasoned seven-year AZ Realtor and Realty One. Grounded in core values of honesty, transparent communication, meticulous detail, and unwavering commitment, she brings true value value to every home journey. As a full-time and full-service agent with a vast network, Paige leverages diverse avenues and masterful marketing, ensuring each property and client receives the attention they deserve for a successful and rewarding real estate experience. So elevate your real estate venture with Paige today, and you can check out your estimated home value by clicking on the home bot below. I love those. I think they're freaking awesome. You can click on it anytime, anywhere you are in the country and find out what your home value is. So I think they're great. And by the way, it doesn't matter where the realtor lives. You can connect with them and they can connect you with someone that is in their brokerage or someone that they're connected to in a different state. So I always love to go with referrals. I'm a referral person all day long. I want to know what work you've done, who you've worked with. So it's very important to me to have referrals. And I think Ty might teach us a little bit about that today, too, because referrals are huge in uh, growing and scaling a business. So Dr. Ty Richardson is a serial entrepreneur. Listen to this. I've never heard this word, so he's going to have to tell me what it is. Intra. Entrepreneur. Can't wait to hear about that one. Who believes in growth through community. See, I told you him and I were like brother and sister, growth through community. Come on now. With a career rooted in corporate America, spending his early years in a Fortune 500, Dr. Ty became an entrepreneur in the tech industry in Silicon Valley. Since then, he's pursued ventures as a digital nomad in finance, real estate, marketing, and coaching. So today, Dr. Ty is the VP of member services for the Advanced Innovation Society. It's a community of entrepreneurs and career professionals that come together to support each other as they shift from growth to scale to exit. 
He's the founder and CEO of One Global Financing Corporation and the YoPro Global Foundation, as well as a member of the board of directors on about five different board of directors. I'm not even going to get into it. But I also want you to know that Dr. Ty loves fitness. Yes, loves cooking and loves travel. You could be my brother. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> it's a thing. And I know my apple fell far from the tree. So maybe we should get a DNA test. That's all I'm saying, Ty. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Colleen. I'm glad, excited to be here. It was so fun to meet you for the first time because we had so much in common, uh, yet we're so different. But you have to tell me, intrapreneur, I've heard entrepreneur, serial. I, I mean, I've heard them all. What's an intra? I've heard mompreneur, right? We've done, we've done the thing. What's an intrapreneur? So intrapreneurs is a term that I learned when I was uh, at the tail end of my corporate career with American Airlines. And an intrapreneur is somebody who runs, uh, works within a company, but in an entrepreneur with an entrepreneurial mindset. Mm -hmm. So I was running the call center operations for Europe, for Europe and Asia Pacific for American Airlines. And that that part of the company was mine. And so as a leader for that, I was seen as an intrapreneur. Uh, I made decisions. Mm -hmm. like we, we, we planned the business, we did everything um, sort of in an entrepreneurial way for an ROI. Uh, and then we were able to, you know, deliver those results and then share those results. I love that. That's really cool. Okay. Yeah. So I've, I've told them a little bit about your background um, and coming from corporate America, but then, you know, you were in Silicon Valley. Um, you said you pursued ventures as a digital nomad. So let's just explain to everybody what a digital nomad is. So they get that. So a digital nomad for me was the time of my life where I said, you know what, I'm tired of building everybody else's company. I'm just going to do my own, but I'm going to do it my way. And so I sold everything. I got rid of everything. I took my laptop and I went to the Caribbean and my business and life was really the laptop. Um, so, you know, I traveled between Trinidad, Jamaica, Barbados, we built events, we networked with people. I was in the DR for a little bit. It was just constantly roving. Mm -hmm. And just anchored by the laptop. And uh, I accidentally in those three years built a marketing company, a six figure marketing company where we would do events uh, for brands like Coca-Cola, Microsoft, the film festivals. So we we ended up doing these events because we were all we were very driven by experiences uh, and people just started to notice as we got through the Caribbean smaller markets, you know, easier to be a big fish in a smaller market. Uh, but but it turned out to be this really big thing. And I loved it, except after like three years, I realized I'm not really built to live on the Caribbean. Um, I, I need that sort of city life, that fast pace going, like these longer decision-making cycles just were painful, like having to know, you know, relationships to get things even done or signed, like mm. it just became a longer laborious process. And so with that, came back to the US and got into a whole bunch of new ventures. Okay, so a lot of people are like, oh, I would love to go live in the Caribbean. And you can, by the way, all of you can. So you do exactly what Ty just said. You sell everything, you get rid of it, and your life is in your laptop and you go. Um, I would think that after a few years, they're thinking it's like vacation, right? It's that Caribbean vacation and that feel. And when you get there, probably like that nostalgia maybe wears off after a while too. And and then you just feel kind of this pull back to what you were doing before. And I do know a lot of people that have tried to do that and they've come back kind of the same thing. Um, uh, you did say something very important that I can never understand how my husband does this, but probably because of his drone business, he needs, you know, the big tower, but he has, you know, this just massive computer in his office. And he's like, your whole business is ran off that tiny little laptop. And I'm like, yeah. My whole bit, like everything. And it's all in the cloud too, by the way. So yep. I, I learned that very early on when my computer got messed up and kept getting the blue screen to death that I lost a lot of things. And so I everything's backed up. This thing could die tomorrow, drop in the water, fall out of a plane. It doesn't matter. I'll just go buy another computer and I'm right back up running where I was. So <clears throat> I think it's important to mention that. But I love that you said that because we are able to be nimble and move around. Um, and are people doing that as entrepreneurs? You state you're a serial entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So let's explain what that means. Yeah. So a serial entrepreneur is somebody who's started or operates multiple businesses. And so in my, in my 
current state, uh, I have two entrepreneurial ventures, a foundation, and, you know, as you read, a series of boards that I sit on. Yeah. And so with, with all of the stuff that I'm doing, I have to be diligent. I have to be disciplined. I have to be organized. And the laptop does it for me. Like I, you know, I recently just opened, we opened cities in networking communities in London and Paris, and I was able to be in London and Paris on the ground. I was literally in, in Paris on Monday, London on Wednesday, Fort Lauderdale on Friday doing events and didn't skip a beat. Everything was done emails were answered yeah. because I built the system for efficiency. And I can do that both within the company that I'm running right now, the Advanced Innovation Society, but also with the other companies that I own that are running themselves. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I had a little bit of a love-hate relationship with the airlines when they entered Wi-Fi. I was like, this was my one downtime, quiet time where no one could text me, call me, no emails. Like it was like, silence. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting a little antsy, like this could be really good work time because it's quiet. So now I love it because I just put on my noise canceling headphones and I just go to work. Like the yeah. second I get on the plane and it's like, oh my gosh, uninterrupted. I get all of this work done. Uh, so again, love hate relationship with what that looks like. But as a serial entrepreneur, I, I'm, you need to have that. So if you are a business owner and you're listening to this, um, well, one, I think you could be working at a company and be an intrapreneur. That's something very interesting that we talked about. But we really wanted to get into the growth and the scale and the exit. And if you're growing a business to exit, that's going to look very different, I'm assuming, Ty, than sure. just getting into a business without any kind of end. You're just growing it. There's not really a plan. You're just maybe have a goal of a specific amount of money you want to make or where you want to live or how many hours a week you want to work if you're building that around your lifestyle. So get us into the depth now of what is the proper way if someone is already owning a business, what should they shift or change to be thinking about scale or be thinking about exit? And I've heard a lot of people say, well, I don't, I really don't want to scale my business right now because I'm getting ready to exit or I don't want to grow it because I don't want to work more hours. Well, I mean, we could solve that problem in two seconds on the show, but Ty, talk to me about some of the clients and, and talk us through what does that mean for someone listening that owns a business or is starting a business or does want to get out of there, but they want to sell it. What does that look like? Okay. All right. So let's do a quick recap. So this yeah. launch, grow, scale, exit. Launch, obviously, you have an idea, you bring it to market, you test the concept, you launch the business. A lot of companies die at launch phase because they didn't fully think through how to go from launch to growth. Growth is, okay, the, con the market has said they love the concept, they're willing to pay the money for it. Now I just need more customers. I need to get to the next level and I need more customers, maybe more products. I want to grow the existing business I have. So you grow and you just multiply what you already have. Scale is that, okay, the business is now producing a profit. There's good revenue. Um, how do we take the business and remove the owner, but like multiply it, like grow mm -hmm. any? So that might be the acquisition of another company. It might be a second location. It might also be where you hire an integrator or a GM. It might be you franchise the business. So all of those options fall into the scale bucket. When we get to exit, it's like, okay, I've determined that I'm ready to, there's only a few ways you can exit the business, right? You can either pass it on to the next generation of, of your family. Most, most of the new, new generation don't want to take on a business. Um, so, so that's a dwindling option for a lot of people. Or you can go IPO. That's, again, a very different uh, prospect, depending on where your business is. Or you can sell it. When you're looking at selling the business and getting to exit, you tip, you have to start and figure out what's the number that you want, right? So a financial counselor, a financial advisor will tell you, what do you need to live on for the next few years after you've exited the business? Should you want to exit and retire? If you want to exit and buy a new business, well, what do you need to invest in the new business? And then what do you need as a buffer? So knowing your numbers, knowing the math of what you need beyond the exit helps you start figuring out, well, what do you need to sell that business at? Now, when you're selling the business, and you have that number, that number isn't the money you're making today, right? The money you're making today, your gross revenue, that money minus your expenses gives you an EBITDA, right? Earnings before tax dividend, uh, tax depreciation um, 
uh, and, and amortization. So, so that gives you an EBITDA number. That's your, your number that the, let's call it the profit before you deduct everything in the business. That EBITDA, then to sell the business, you calculate a multiple of that EBITDA. Now, that multiple could be three times, if depending on your industry, it could be five times, depending on your industry and the, how well the business is doing. And that'll give you the number that you've calculated that you need to exit with. Knowing that number before you start the business or even at the growth phase allows you to do everything between growth and exit to get to that number. Knowing that number and the time you want to achieve the number is even better in terms of planning your business. So you wanna make sure that even if you're, you're, you've started the business, you've launched it, you're in growth phase, even if you're in scale phase, calculate the number, figure out the timeline, and then every decision you make over the course of that time needs to point to that number, needs to get you to that place. Um, one of the things like in the strategies is that when people talk about, well, I want to retire and I want to, I want to sell the business at 5 million and you're at, let's say 1 million EBITDA. Well, you may not be able to get a five times multiple of that 1 million today, mm -hmm. but if you do a few things like expanding your branding or gaining more customers or doing a partnership on a joint venture where you don't have to add costs to the books, but you add revenue, those things get you to bump up your revenue without bumping, bumping up your cost. And therefore your multiple seems more likely now. So there are different strategies once you've made the decision that you want to exit, once you've figured out what the timeline for that exit is going to be, then you start planning your business very specifically and meticulously and intentionally towards that outcome. Yeah, I totally agree with that. We might be losing some people, but I think you explained it very, very uh, 101 for dummies, I would say. It's pretty specific. Um, and I have watched people try and do that on their own without any type of mentor, without anyone beside them, helping them, assisting them. How important is outside counsel? You know, I just go back and think of, the four businesses that my husband and I own and working with the CPA over the past several months and working on taxes and new filings and all of these things. And I look through all the numbers and I'm like, I don't even know how he comes to some of these numbers on these tax papers, you know? And I listen that, uh, to other people that tell me, oh yeah, I do my own taxes. Are you kidding me? How could you ever put in your own hands, do that Yet I think so many people, because it's their business tie, it's yeah. their baby, right? That that family business, like uh, my husband and I is, have grown businesses. We have a family business. It has a different meaning and value to you than uh, somebody else that might want to buy it. And here's the thing, having that outside counsel and someone that understands how you should grow it, when you should be pulling yourself back out of the business, you might not see that from your perspective because you think you're the only one that can do it. You're the one that has the secret sauce. Do you know what I'm saying? How, how, how does that happen? With, and how do you work with businesses like that? That's got to be a big, that's a big thing. So, so what's one thing that's really critical for everyone to remember is that you got into business to share your zone of genius, to, to, mm -hmm. to impart what you are knowledgeable about, what you're an expert about to the world. When you start pivoting away or taking time away to do numbers and things that you didn't necessarily, you know, you have to learn to figure out, you're taking away from your zone of genius. You're taking away from the gift that you're supposed to give others. And we each have to stay in our zone of genius. There are experts who spend their whole life figuring this out. There are experts who work with companies on a daily basis and know what's trending, what's not trending, how to do it. Like let them be experts in their zone of genius and tap into that resource. Don't try to do it all yourself to save a few pennies because again, you saving a few pennies here is you taking away your time and energy over here and mm -hmm. denying yourself potential revenue from that. Yeah. So, so that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that you have to be comfortable knowing what you don't know. You also have to be comfortable not knowing what you don't know. And so as the reality is like, there's a bunch of stuff you don't know. And there are the people who know that stuff. So tap into those resources to get that knowledge. You may figure out a path through books or podcasts or reading that says, okay, I'm, I'm going to try this new strategy in my business and this is going to help me exit or this is going to help me grow Guess what? That strategy may have worked for a different industry or a different business in a different frame of mind, but it may not have worked for you. 
it may not work for you. And so you want to make sure that you're talking to an expert who's kind of covered a broad scape of companies and businesses and that and that can give you that advice, that that reassurance, that ability to know yes is a good strategy or tweak it this way so it applies to your business because of their experience. Now, how do I work with people like that? The community that we're engaged in the community that we're building, the Advanced Innovation Society around the world, we have entrepreneurs at every stage of business. The people, not the growth, not the launch and growth stage, I take that back. We focus on scale and exit. So folks who are in our community are getting into their seven and eight figures um, and they're growing their business. And so as a result, they're having those conversations. Mm -hmm. They're going through those processes. And at this point, they're also kind of figuring out what's working and what's not working, but they're mm -hmm. sharing it in the community. And that's the place, that's what we provide is that platform and that space for people to have those free, those ideas, those conversations, those free, free thought, as it were, yeah. sharing. So you talked about community and I want to get to that because that's a, to me, one of the biggest pieces of growing a business. But I, I'm going to go back to something you said. And for those of you that haven't read the book, Think and Grow Rich, just go get your copy and start reading it right now. You should reread it every year, actually. But the one piece I love the most, and I always tell the story, is Henry Ford. They uh, would take him to court to prove that he didn't know anything. And he would say over and over and over again, I don't need to know that. All I need to know is I can push a button on my desk. Back then we had phones with buttons. And anyone would come, that person would come into my office and they're going to give you the answer to the question that you have. And I love that because, you know, he had his zone of genius that you talked about. And then he had engineers and all of these other people working with him to build this, uh, you know, legacy of Ford uh, through the individuals that he hired because of their expertise. And he didn't try and figure it all out. Ford would not be what it was today if it wasn't for Henry Ford and the individual that he was in the very beginning when that business took off. And I think there's like an ego check that needs to happen, Ty. Like, that's great that you know X, Y, Z, but you don't know these other things. So, you know, I'm already going into this franchise with my husband and I saying, I have a feeling we're going to have to hire a CEO at some point because I know what my husband's really good at. I know what I'm really good at. And then I think I need someone to be watching the vision and keeping us moving with the kind of how we planned it. But we are a boots on the ground. That's the kind of people that we are. And so knowing that, I think you pre-plan for those things. And I love that you said that. So talk to me about building growth through community. What have you seen uh, in your community that has really helped um, the individuals that are in there uh, through learning, through sharing, through building that community? How, how has that changed their path for them and you? So one of the things that, you know, that a lot of people do in the digital world is they, they build a community, they build a company, sorry, behind behind a laptop, right? And, and it's wonderful to log on to Zoom and connect with people, but you do miss that connection, you miss that interaction. Mm. And the thing that our community provides is, first of all, it gives you a safe space because we have a, uh, I don't want to say a barrier to entry, but we have a qualification process, right? You have to be at a certain revenue level to get into the community. And the reason we did that is because we want people not to be afraid to talk about things like numbers and how much they're making and what they're you know, vision is for growth. We want them to have a safe space, a safe environment where they can freely talk about their vision and nobody's going to judge them accordingly. And so we that's the first thing that, that we encourage and really curate within our community. The second thing is, is that we drive relationship building. So this is not a community where we have a retreat once a month or you just network with pe people online. When we bring people together, we facilitate conversations that get people to know what each other's businesses is so that they can pour into each other, right? We're not the ones standing at the front of the room being a coach or strategizing. This is what you guys should do. We are putting them in a space where they all get to, mm. they don't have to be coaches, right? We have people from construction. We have people from manufacturing. We have people from speaking. We have, we have some coaches, but everybody gets in a room and everybody's able to share insights from a very, very, very diverse set of backgrounds, geographies, um, uh, gender, 
we make sure that everybody can contribute to the conversation and add value in one way or another. So we bring diversity of thought, we bring diversity of input, we bring diversity of background and experience, um, and we put them in the same room and they communicate. And then the third thing is, is what's critical, you and I talked about this before, that in-person connection, that yeah. human experience. So, so we offer an online platform, an online portal for people to connect and, and really engage online. But we we for, we drive people into in-person community networking events, or or we call them um, live and local events, where you mastermind. So the same thing we do online, we do in person. We have innovation circles and masterminds and and speaker series where we give people content, but we force them to connect. We we give them the ability to collaborate with each other in the room, so that they see that the relationship isn't just virtual. It isn't just abstract. It's human and it's real. Yeah. Those are my favorite. And before Ty and I hit record, I was telling him how every day I'm now adding something into my schedule that gets me out of the office. Um, and I did not realize how much I was affected by COVID because it happened and my husband and I just kept on going. I didn't have any children at home that young that I had to school or whatever. Right. I just kept on trucking and, uh, and we just kept working and building our businesses and life was great. And then I realized probably two years later, a year and a half later, that I felt like a little exhausted around people quicker. Mm. And I was like, why is this happening to me? That's not me. I'm energized by people. And I would like want to get home quick. And little by little, I was noticing this like, I think I was affected and I didn't believe I was. So I believe it's like building a muscle back up, right? Like, so the, we just have to be connecting with people face-to-face -face and having face-to-face -face conversations and putting our phones down, putting our laptops away and having real connections with another human being. And I love masterminds. Those are my favorite because that's where some of the best ideas come out of because it's one person says something, another person feeds off of that and another person has a different idea. Then the perspective completely flips around and someone says something else and you're like, whoa. And everyone's like, whoa, none of us ever thought about that, right? Yeah. And how wonderful that becomes. You cannot do that over text. You cannot do that. Um, I don't believe it has the same effect either, uh, through, you know, the visual screen. However, I've done several masterminds on the computer and those work, but I will tell you the in-person gives you time space and it gives each person the opportunity to think, reflect, uh, dig a little in their past or, you know, a different space in their mind to come up with something different. So I love what you're saying. And I know there are going to be some people out there that are going to want to connect with you. So share with them how they find the community, where the, the application, like what is the application process? Do you want them to come directly to you, Ty, uh, to talk with you if, if, you know, they need to be in a community like yours? Hey, if you're scaling and you're in growth phase and you're moving from that six to seven figures and you're <clears throat> looking to exit at some point, You've got to be in community with like-minded people that are doing the same. It is necessary. It's not, I don't think it's optional. It's necessary. 100%. Yeah. You can't do it on your own. You can't be an no. attitude. Talked about that subject matter expertise. We talked about leveraging other people. Communities are great ways to leverage other people and the depth of knowledge. We live in the online world, and a lot of people in the online world have been through coaching programs. You know, we're talking twenty thousand, thirty thousand, sixty thousand, hundred thousand dollar coaching programs, and they're bringing all of that knowledge and expertise with them. Being in a community allows you to tap into so much more than just a human who's built a business or is building a business. It talks about it. It allows you to tap into a depth of knowledge that you don't even know is there. Mm -hmm. And so that constant, like not just being in the community, but engaging, being active, you know, participating, people say, oh, well, you know, I bought a, a you know, I joined the community, I didn't get anything out of it. Well, you also joined the gym, but if you don't go, you're not going to get results, right? So you have to do more than just join the community. You have to yeah. participate, engage and, and, and yeah. be active. And so um, for people who are interested in going that that route of scale and, and exit, uh, they can reach out to me directly. I would, I would prefer you have a conversation with me because then we can talk about where you are and I can give you a very linear path as to how you can get value. Uh, and you can reach out to me on any social. It's dr 
T-Y Rich, so Dr. Ty Rich, so D-R-T-Y Rich. There are different variations of that, but if you search that, you'll always find me at some point um, on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. The website for the community is theinnovationsociety.com, uh, and that'll give you a little bit of an overview as to what we do. That's great. I love it that there are um, communities out there that are supporting um, everyone at every different level, whatever it is that you need, whether it be personal life, there's communities out there for women that are, you know, separated, going through divorce, single moms, right? And then, of course, the support we need in business. And you think, nah, I don't need that unless it's a personal thing, but we do need it in business. And I never want to be the smartest person in the room, Ty. So you always want to be surrounded by people yeah. that know more than you. Come on now. Right? You actually want to be the, the you want to be the, I don't want to say dumbest, but you want to be like the simplest person in the room. I would like to be in a room that has one to five. I'd like to be at the one so I can get to the five because of the room. Yeah. And I'd come in at the five because what am I going to do? Like, yeah, I like to give back of advice and so on, but I like it while I'm growing, not only. Mm -hmm. You know, that was beautifully said. And I'm just going to remind our listeners, you know, you're the only you that's ever been as I'm pointing backwards. That's in the past. And you're the only you that's ever going to be from now till. So if you've built this baby of a business that you love and you're like, there's no way I'm passing this on to my kids, which uh, I said, we're going to build ours and sell it because I don't think our kids are going to want to take it over. They're not going to have the same passions we are. So this is important, getting to community that is going to support you through that. And I think that's really why I really liked Ty when I met him is because I believe a thousand percent community is like the number one thing that helps you. Um, and I've watched it with my own eyes for century of, of businesses that build community around them and how much more successful they are than other individuals. It's crucial. And like I said, go read the book, Think and Grow Rich. He talks about community, he talks about masterminds. You're going to learn a lot about individuals from the very beginning and all of the businesses that were built and the simplicity of it. We make things way too difficult. There's a simplicity factor there. And the Innovation Society, the Advanced Society, we've talked about all of them today. Go find uh, Ty on LinkedIn. Dr. Ty Rich, Instagram, Dr. Ty Rich, and then Facebook, Dr. Ty Coach. You can find him out there as well. Ty, thanks so much for being a, a guest on today's show. It was a fun conversation. You're a fun yeah. guy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And I like mushrooms too. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, what did the mushroom say to the whatever when he walked into the bar? You're, I'm a fun guy. Kicked him out of the bar or something. My girlfriend tells me that all the time and I can never repeat it back to anybody. I just know there's a mushroom and a fun guy in a bar. That's all I can say. <laughs> well, thank you for having me, Colleen. <laughs> Ty, you're amazing. Thank you so much. And to all of our listeners out there, thank you so much for making us one of the top podcasts in the country. Uh, we absolutely adore you. Don't forget, we want to hear from you. Info at ColleenBiggs.net. Please be sure to email us and tell us what you thought of today's show and some subjects that you would love to learn about. And until next time, don't forget, be you and be strong. Bye-bye for now. We hope you enjoyed our show today as our guests shared their secrets on designing their life by taking the necessary leaps to expand their influence and attract the right people and clients into their lives. To start these easy steps for yourself, be sure to visit www.colleenbiggs.net forward slash freebies to download the seven ways to increase your exposure today.